Okay gang, so in the series we're going to have four more videos and what it's pretty much going to comprise of is taking, so now we've seen how to make carboxylic acids, right? From various reactions from nitriles and from carbo, uh, carbon dioxide. Now I want to show you guys how we can take carboxylic acids and make different functional groups that we're eventually going to do more chemistry with. And I'm talking about esters, amides, something called acid anhydrides, and in this video, a group called, a functional group called acid halides. And don't worry, you'll see that this, this is a very uh, pattern heavy type of uh, reaction sequence. And honestly, it'll be one of the more uh, easy and honestly fun reactions that we do. Okay, so I want to show you guys first uh, a reaction where we take carboxylic acid and I'll show you what exactly an acid halide is. So I'm just going to use a generic 2-carbon carboxylic acid. And I'm just going to show you two reactions you can use. All right, so let's just say I had two of these. And let's just say I use this reagent called SOCl2. Okay, I think the name is called, it's called, this is called final chloride, but don't worry about that too much. What this transformation is going to do is you're going to replace a chlorine uh, you're going to replace this OH with a Cl. So this is the result of the reaction. You take a carboxylic acid, you throw in SLCl2, and you replace this OH with a chlorine, and this is what an acid halide is, right? It's a carboxylic acid, but you have a halogen, right? So instead of the OH, you have a Cl. Kind of another way you can uh, make a similar transformation occur is if you use a reagent called PBr3, you take a carboxylic acid, and instead of an acid chloride, you would instead make an acid bromide. And these, got, these two functional groups behave the same. But the, the defining characteristic, right, is your carbonyl, your C double bonded O, and then a halogen in place of the OH on the carboxylic acid. Now, in most chemistry courses, I believe, uh, so these are reactions you need to memorize. And in most cases, they're just, it's just that. There are mechanisms behind these, and I'm gonna show you this mechanism because I have you do it on the worksheet, but don't sweat it too much. It's more there for just extra practice, but I'm still gonna show it to you guys. But just take home point, make sure you memorize these guys, because as you'll see in like the, uh, the next video sequence, we're gonna do some chemistry with acid halides because they're very reactive. But let me erase this and then I'll show you how to make this uh, reaction occur and we'll look at the mechanism. Okay gang, so let's take a quick peek at this mechanism. Remember, it's on one of the worksheets, but don't sweat it too much, all right? Like, it's good if you know it, but I don't really think you'll ever have to do it for someone on an exam, right? So. Sorry, I don't, you can hear the people outside, just ignore them. Anyways, right, so here's how we're going to start off. Here's our carboxylic acid. And for this, you do need to know how to draw this SOCl2. So it's going to look a little like this. Sulfur double bonded to oxygen and bonded to two chlorines. Okay, so as you can see, this sulfur, you know, he's attached to chlorines and double bonded to an oxygen. He's partially positive. He's susceptible to some nucleophilic attack. So these arrows are a little funky to start off with, but just stay with me. They're gonna kind of flow like this. This electron pair from the OH is gonna swing down right here. It's gonna form a double bond here. One of these electron pairs from this double bond is going to come over here and attack sulfur. I know, super weird, but stick with me. And at this point, right, we need some bond to you know, break and move, right? So I'm gonna pick one of the electrons in this double bond right here and kick him up on to oxygen, right? So a lot of things just happened. Let me draw the result of the electron flow, right? So I have my two carbons here and a double bond over here. Oxygen is bonded to that hydrogen and a plus charge. I then have just a single bond going up to oxygen, right? And he is now has a single bond to sulfur. In addition, right, I now have this oxygen with, uh, off of this sulfur, and he has three lone pairs. He has a negative charge. 
and we didn't do anything with these two chlorines. They are Jay chilling. They're just hanging around right over there. So here's kind of the next step. What's going to happen is this electron pair is going to swing back down, reform the double bond between sulfur and oxygen, but we needed some type of good leaving group, right? Otherwise, you know, we're going to have some octet issues with sulfur. Well, remember, just from our, uh, our early days in OCHEM 1, we know if we kicked off Cl- here, Cl- is a super weak, stable conjugate base, right? Good leaving group. Whoops, that is a not straight arrow. So I'll draw the results of that electron flow. Didn't touch the oxygen down here. Didn't touch that oxygen. Sulfur's double bonded to oxygen again. And now we just have the one chlorine over here. Okay, so here's kind of uh, a big step now. Here's what's going to happen. That chlorine we just kicked off, what he's going to do, he's also a good nucleophile at the same time. Right, we have this partially positive carbonyl right here, right? What he's going to do is he's going to swing in and attack, right? But what's our leaving group, right? What's the good leaving group that's going to bounce off of this structure when chlorine attacks? Well, think about this whole big thing up here. Another weird cascade of arrows. This bond is going to break, and we're going to have an ox another oxygen form double bond with sulfur. However, that's going to be one too many bonds. So what do we do? Well, again, we have another chlorine on this guy. So what we're going to do is, while this bond forms the double bond between oxygen and sulfur, this sulfur chlorine bond is also going to break. The, it's going to kind of do that again. So let's draw the result of that. I know there's a lot going on here. Like I said, you don't have to sweat this mechanism really. So I have my two carbons. I have my double bonded OH right here, plus charge. I now have a chlorine attached. And now think about what we have going on here. I have a sulfur double bonded to oxygen. I now have another double bonded oxygen to that sulfur. I don't have the chlorine anymore because he left in that whole attack, right? So just the Cl minus down here. And that's everybody, right? Everyone's accounted for. So if you want to think of it like this, we have a Cl minus down here. We need a cleanup step with that hydrogen. He can kind of snag him. And think about what we have, right? Let's, you know, discard the, this sulfur dioxide. We don't really care about him. But now what this leaves us with is if I draw him just right side up, our acid chloride, right? And the resulting HCl. So a lot of weird arrows, but this is how the mechanism flows. I had to kind of practice this one a lot to kind of jam it in my head. It's on the worksheet. You can choose to do it if you want to. If not, screw it, okay? All right, but what I really want to make sure you guys get down is the next three videos. We're going to be kind of following, and we kind of do a little bit here, what's called the addition elimination, or an addition elimination mechanism. And what's great is that it's methodical. It's going to, we do it, you know, each time in each of the next three videos. It's a pattern. I know you guys are going to pick up on it. It's very easy, fun to do. See you guys in the next video.